June 26th of an unknown year, five children suddenly vanished with no evidence as to where they had gone. There was one similarity between all five children, however. They had all visited and gone missing at the same location, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, leading to a shutdown of the companies. Afton becomes the identity of Springtrap, gone completely insane. With everyone in their right places, a fire is lit and the children's souls are set free. Could this be the end of the story? Today on FNAF Unsolved. We come across the glitch and the virus of William Afton in a virtual reality game who holds a threat against any of the players. After everything that has happened, Afton is revived and today's mystery is the story of how. Hello everyone and welcome to season 3 question mark of FNAF Unsolved. Yes, this completely came out of nowhere, mainly because I'm at uni now and it's difficult to make videos, so surprise. Yes, the videos won't be as high production quality as before, but it's FNAF Unsolved, so you've got to love it, right? Right? We don't have any special guests for today, but I do have more people in mind for future episodes, and that is where it's going to get good. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on it. William Afton, the murderer of many children, was last seen as the form of scrap trap in the flames of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in 2023. In the final fire to erase everything Fazbear Entertainment, the souls of the trapped kids were freed. The children's souls peacefully entered heaven where they belonged. Henry and Michael Afton could possibly have died too, peaceful deaths, knowing they had finally ended William Afton, the murderer that deserved to be swallowed by the darkest pits of hell. That is what happened. Right now I'm going to do what's called a pro gamer move and I'm going to just casually break the fourth wall, just casually strolling by, listening to music, looking around, breaking the fourth wall. Afton finally went up in flames for the effect that he had on so many people, all of the families in devastation of their lost children, William's victims. But he was not put to rest yet. Identified in Afton's brain was brain activity, even after he had died. There was something keeping him alive that shouldn't have been. This was the soul of a child. A child not ready to let him go yet, the one that William Afton should not have killed. Instead, he was tortured by all of his inventions. Animatronics from every direction prepared to torture him for eternity in hell. Visions of nightmarish animatronics and even himself. Everything that his son, Michael Afton, had to go through was punished upon him for all the lives that were lost to him. The one he should not have killed was the child spirit of Golden Freddy. Man, Golden Freddy is all we ever talk about. He just seems to be a character who we think we solved, and the next day, oh, look at that. He's now in the title of another FNAF Unsolved episode. It's like the world is trying to tell us something. God is trying to tell us something. For some reason, I believe God's name is Scott. Yeah, Scott. That sounds appropriate here. Don't know where it all came from, though. Good old Scott. Sorry, I just love breaking the fourth wall. Although William Afton now seems to be in an infinite limbo of no hope, that doesn't mean he can't come back to life, knowing his extensive technology in Afton Robotics. Afton Robotics and Fazbear Entertainment is always one step ahead of every other company, introducing the latest virtual reality game, Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted. This virtual reality game was created by an indie game developer who decided to make real past events into a video game. However, something isn't quite right. The game seems to have quite a few glitches, and interacting with them presents the player with audio tapes of a girl explaining about the game and something that is not supposed to be in there. This game has some kind of malicious code in it that we haven't been able to fully contain or even understand for that matter. I saw it for the first time today. There was a character I couldn't make out who it was standing at the end of the hall. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer who supposedly made up a bunch of crazy stories that tarnished the brand. But that's uh. not true at all. You can see where all this is going, that's for sure. Or can you? 
You see, it's weird how the events that come from this game are both predictable and completely not predictable. It's like a predictable story even though nobody has ever told something quite like it before. It's pretty neat. Oh, actually, this one's kind of dangerous. It could eat us at any time. Inside the game, there seems to be a virus of a green rabbit that appears in the doorway of the main hub area that keeps stepping closer after the user keeps finding more glitches. This virus is referred to as Glitch Trap and had no intention of being in the game in the first place. The girl on the tapes tells a story of the game tester, Jeremy, who appeared as though something was very wrong with the game. Jeremy tried to tell us something was wrong. We all just saw it as a challenge to find what the problem was and fix it. Things started changing, but then he started appearing. At least that's what Jeremy said. He started to lose his response entirely and the company felt the need to fire him to discredit him for what he saw. Jeremy complained of nightmares when he came in this morning. He wasn't talking about it like someone telling a friend about his dreams though. He was pale, looked like he hadn't eaten in days. He went directly back to the testing room. He doesn't even jump anymore, nothing scares him. He just stands there like he's talking to someone. Sometimes he rocks from side to side. We were told to leave him alone. I knew I was in line to do the testing next. They'd been prepping me for it. I guess they knew that Jeremy would need to be replaced soon. You can always tell when a company is getting ready to fire someone. The thing about it is that I don't think they were going to fire him because of anything he was doing wrong. They just knew he'd seen something. They needed to discredit him. However, it wasn't long until Jeremy had used a guillotine paper slicer to cut his own face off and stop whatever was happening with Glitch Trap. Have you ever heard of a guillotine paper slicer? I was always afraid of losing a finger. That seems so silly now. Jeremy used to do design work. I guess that's how he knew it was there. There was something that looked like a Halloween mask laying on the floor. I didn't understand. Ink must have spilled. It was only then that I heard a shuffle from the testing room and realized Jeremy must be there. I went back and peered in the window. I couldn't see his face. He had the visor covering his head. He had ink spilled on himself as well. The front of his shirt looked black in the dark room. He turned his head in my direction, but I don't think he knew I was there. I've heard different versions for this virtual reality William Afton character, such as Glitch Trap and Mal Hare, but I have some new ideas. How about we call him Binary Bunny? Wait, no, no, Bug Bunny. No, that's too close to Bugs Bunny. Syntax Trap? Eh, how about Lapin de Papa, which is Rabbit of Glitch in French? You're right, let's just stick with Glitch Trap. So what happened to Jeremy inside the game? And who is this tape girl? While we will never know for sure who the employee was, she did have a grudge towards the company, as it was all a huge cover-up for past events such as the missing children's incident and the bite of 83. Additionally, she knows exactly what she is talking about, and her final tape elaborates on what is going on and how it can be stopped. There is a way to kill it. It wants to escape. To escape through someone. Someone plugged into this game. That's you now. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. Then use the disconnect switch that I've embedded by the main stage. Let it approach you. Let it begin to merge with you. Play the music and flip the switch. That will cause a hard restart of the game and flush the memory, effectively killing it. I hope. I don't know when it will come for you. So if I'm hearing correctly here, this virtual reality rabbit of glitch that contains the remnants of a psychopathic killer is trying to breach the boundaries of the game code and possess humans through the headset. This is like Ennard using Mike Clapton's body on a whole other level. However, no matter what you do, you cannot stop the glitch from completing its task of body swapping and abusing its power to revive Afton. But what exactly is going on here? 
Afton is simultaneously a corpse refusing to die, an old friend tormented in the darkest pits of hell, and a glitch in a game taking over players' bodies. What is real anymore? And what is Afton planning to do with the body of his playtester? I think it's time to get into the theories. The first theory provides an explanation to what Glitch Trap actually is. As the game has evolved, Glitch Trap has become more of a defined and materialistic rabbit creature, but in the early development of the game, it seems as though he was just a glitch. Theoretically, Afton was accidentally installed into the game, and just as a virus would, he evolved and adapted to the surroundings in an attempt to escape and revive himself. Another theory, however, suggests that this Afton inside of the game is the true self-aware Afton himself, who says his iconic line, I always come back. The theory also suggests that William had planned ahead and had somehow known he would die, then come back as a character in a video game, only to come back alive in someone else's body. I absolutely love William Afton's line of, I always come back. It's so hilarious because just when you start to think it's all over and the killer is gone, he comes back and laughs in your face with, I always come back. It's also kind of sad though. His old pal Henry burnt him up and then said this epic long speech with all of his passion for absolutely nothing. Because you know what? The killer always comes back. And it is flipping killing me how ironic and hilarious that is. The final two theories I will present are about the future of William Afton. What are his plans now that he has the ability to mind swap through a VR game? Theory number three seems like the obvious, yet unusual, answer. He could potentially get someone in his possession to then possess other people, and in the end, create an army of William Aftons to take over the world. However, that theory gives us plenty of questions. What exactly would Afton's motivation be? He used to kill kids in a rabbit suit, but why would creating an army of glitch traps be appealing to him? And that brings us to the final theory. Instead of abusing his power to destroy the world, what if he used it to do what he used to do? Kill kids in a rabbit suit. He already has a follower with a rabbit suit named Vanny, who we now believe to hold the torch and be the next villain, all under William Afton's orders. But the future of Vanny and the next generation of Freddies will have to wait for another episode. For now, with a virus glitch bunny inside a VR game, and a new real life bunny killer on the loose, this mystery remains unsolved. <laughs>